Welcome everyone. Uh, we're so glad to be here in Morgantown, West Virginia. My name is Ryan Frankenberry. I'm the state director of the Working Families Party in West Virginia. And we are joined here today by dozens of people that are, that are here to express their support for the Freedom to Vote Act. The Freedom to Vote Act is a crucial piece of legislation that is going to make historic changes to the way we vote and our access to it. Um, I'm not going to speak a lot about it because we've got so many people up, um, but I'm going to kick it over first to Jenny to offer some words, uh, to offer some words and to, and to give us some, some counsel. Hi, I'm Reverend Jenny Williams. I'm the pastor of Avery United Methodist Church in Cheat Lake in Mon County. Um, when I voted in the presidential election, I voted with an absentee ballot and I was able just to walk up into the courthouse and drop that off. Um, later, I attended a class online with uh, the NAACP college and youth um, arm of their organization and listened to somebody talk about voting rights and talking about um, the difficulty that people have because of legislation in each state and laws on the books about absentee voting. It's not uniform across the country. That's ridiculous and it needs to be made available to all sorts of people because of many kinds of accessibility issues. Um, I'm proud to work for a church that in our personnel policy we offer our employees, even the ones that are part-time, the ability to leave work and vote during the work day. But we know that lots of folks, lots of folks are not able to do that and so we need to make sure that we're extending early voting periods, making a federal holiday out of election day. And finally, the last thing that I want to talk about is uh, colleagues from many denominations who, in this last um, presidential election, went to give food and water to people who are standing in line and take care of basic humanitarian needs. That's something that in my tradition is something we're called to do in scripture, to feed hungry people and to give water to those who thirst. Yes. That should be something that's accessible for all people as they stand in line to vote. So I just want to thank Senator Manchin and those who have taken this step in expanding voting rights and encourage um, votes upon that in DC. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next up, we're gonna have Delegate John Williams come up, share some thoughts. Delegate Williams has got to run after this, so we wanted to make sure that we got his voice heard here. Thank you, Ryan. I appreciate it. And I'm so uh, excited to be here for such an important cause. It is the most important cause in our republic and in our democracy because it is the foundation of everything that comes after it. The ability of the public, the people, to consent to what their elected officials do for them and on their behalf. That's what we're here today to talk about, and that's what we're here today to drive home. Voting rights has been an issue that has been um, far too long adjudicated in this country. First, we wouldn't let our black brothers and sisters vote. And then we only just now celebrated 100 years of women being able to vote. And here now still we talk about trying to get people out to the polls. They don't have the ability to. Single moms, single dads who can't get out to the polls because they work. So we need to make voting um, accessible so that we have a government that truly is for the people by the people now, today, tomorrow, and for the next century to come. Let's finish this issue now. End it. Don't kick the can down the road anymore. Let's get it done. Bring it home for it. Thank you. Thank you, Delegate. Uh, next up, we're gonna we're gonna welcome to the microphone Delegate Barbara Fleischauer. Thank you, Ryan, and thank you all for being here today. This is really exciting. Um, I, get, I was listening to Hoppy this morning and heard um, Shelley Moore Capito talking about not voting for this bill. And it, it's just so disappointing if you look at what is in the bill. Now there's been a lot of electioneering and sloganing about these various bills, but this is very basic stuff. This is like automatic voter registration, which we passed. Um, in 2016 in West Virginia, it was authorized by the federal government and our Secretary of State still hasn't implemented it. It's so frustrating. And, and it would be great if we had these national minimum standards. Um, 
Same day voter registration. Lots of states have that. It works. Why can't we have that? Um, standards for voter identification. One of the things we did is we traded voter ID. We made it as expansive as we can for automatic voting because we thought that was so important that people could register when they get their car um, their their driver's license in West Virginia we thought that was really important well we never they got voter ID we didn't get this but that voter ID was as broad as we could think of everything that you could use for a voter ID is okay in West Virginia and this is patterned after that and um, our minister from the Avery Church Jenny was talking a little bit about um, food and water. Can you imagine somebody thinking that it should be illegal to give people water when they're standing in line for hours because they want to vote? Um, Delegate Williams talked about it. It is sacred. It is sacred our right to vote. And we need to make sure that people really can use it. And all these efforts across our, our nation to limit people's right to vote, well, why would we do that? Don't we want every single citizen to be able to exercise their road, road as a citizen, their rights? So we hope that somehow this bill will get through. We deserve it. We deserve to, everyone to be able to vote. I mean, without restrictions. And so I, um, I'm, I wanna thank the organizers for doing this today. All the people who are making the trip, thank you for doing that. And um, let's pass this bill. Let's make it sure that every voter gets the right to vote. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're gonna split up the delegation here and I'm gonna welcome our friend Riley, who has actually been out having direct conversations one-on-one -on -one with voters. Hi everyone, thank you. So my name is Riley Hot. I'm 22 years old and I'm from Parkersburg. I'm currently a senior at WVU and lead organizer for Unpack West Virginia. And I want to start out by thanking you all for coming out to rally behind this bill today because grassroots action is what we need if we truly want a system that works for all of us. Um, like he mentioned, um, with Unpack, we've knocked over 50,000 doors across West Virginia this summer in support of the For the People Act and now the Freedom to Vote Act. Um, we've gotten over 8,000 calls to Senator Manchin's office. Um, so thanks for listening to us, Senator Manchin. Uh, we really couldn't have gotten this far without you listening to the constituents that have been calling your office every day. Um, so a little bit of why I support this bill. Uh, I study psychology and addiction studies. So I care very deeply about mental health and addiction recovery resources in our state. And I've had countless friends and family members struggle with the disease of addiction, and many of them have sadly not found recovery. The feeling of knowing that your loved one is potentially close to death and cannot find an accessible, affordable, or comfortable place to receive proper mental health treatment is the worst feeling in the world. And I know it is a very common experience held by many West Virginians which pains me for our state. I pray every day for my friends who are struggling and for the families who have lost loved ones to addiction, but prayers are clearly not efficient. Our state continues to lead the nation in opioid overdoses and overdose deaths, and progress in mental health treatment is being stunted by the pharmaceutical industry, which leads the numbers in lobbying payouts. Uh, in 2020, spending over $306 million on our politicians. That's over twice as much as the second top lobbying industry. Addiction is a systemic issue and it should be acknowledged as the fault of a failing healthcare system, corporate greed, and our failing government that continues to put the needs of corporations and billionaires before the needs of their constituents. Thankfully, a bill has recently been introduced in the Senate by our Senator Joe Manchin that's going to crack down on this corruption and expose dark money in politics. Um, so, how it connects to addiction, the Freedom to Vote Act will re-enfranchise former nonviolent felons so that those who have served their sentence can have their voices heard by their representatives without expanding access to former felons. We're silencing over 6.1 million Americans nationwide. 
It's also going to expose dark money in politics, which will significantly reduce the impact that pharmaceutical lobbying currently has on our laws with the Disclose and Honest Ads Act. We deserve to know who's funding the super PACs that influence so many policy decisions in Washington, and we should have the same disclosure laws that apply to printed political ads apply to online political ads. And transparency is something we don't get from politicians, and this is a great opportunity to shed more light on the vast amounts of money that influence our elected leaders. There are many other parts of this bill that are super important, um, but yeah, thank you guys so much. Uh, passing the Freedom to Vote Act is a huge step in ensuring that every American counts, every voice is heard, and eventually we can truly heal our state from the devastation of the opioid crisis. I urge you all to continue to call, email, and write letters to our senators to express your support for the Freedom to Vote Act. Thank you so much. Thank you, Riley. Up next, I want to bring, uh, we've got a visitor, a special guest visitor, who has come all the way from, from Jefferson County, from Shepherdstown, Delegate John Doyle, he is on his way to Charleston because they've been called back to finish their special session on redistricting, and I'm sure he has some words to offer on that. Yeah. Ryan, thank you. Yes, I'm special. <laughs> um, the one aspect of, of the... Uh, Freedom to Vote Act that I'd like to focus on is it mandates uh, nonpartisan uh, independent redistricting commissions for, for Congress. Yeah. Now, now, we have all just been through a partisan oh. redistricting. Oh. And it, it is unfortunate that they could not include in the Freedom to Vote Act uh, nonpartisan commissions for states as well. I'm glad they didn't. Because given our current Supreme Court, I'm afraid that would give them an opportunity to declare the bill un unconstitutional once it passes. But I do believe this. Once this bill passes with that mandate for nonpartisan commissions for all the states for congressional, I do think many states will simply say, hey, we got this commission. We may as well let them do it for legislative, too. So we're going to just inch our way uh, to uh, to a position where it's it's fair to people. And I don't mean fair to legislators. We should not be picking our voters. The voters should choose us. Thank you. There you go, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, John. Um, up next, we're gonna we're gonna round out our delegation of our legislators with Delegate Evan Hansen. Thank you, and I, I think it's very fitting that Delegate Doyle is here with us today, um, bringing up an independent redistricting commission because we, many of us here today, have sponsored bills to have an independent redistricting commission in West Virginia and those bills have not moved. An example of why we need federal action on this issue. Also, Delegate Doyle and I worked hard on an election reform bill that built on the successes from the 2020 election in West Virginia, where the Secretary of State and the county clerks mailed absentee ballots to more West Virginians than ever. And what happened? Our voter turnout skyrocketed. More people voted than ever before without any increase in fraud. We proved, we proved that that can work in West Virginia, but the Secretary of State does not want to allow that to happen in the future. This is why we need federal action. This is why we need this bill to pass, because there is no right more sacred in this country than the right to vote. I was just kidding, y'all. I meant the delegation for this part. So next up, I want to, let's see if I can find it. I want to bring up Ariana Islam with the West Virginia College Democrats. Hi, everybody. Uh, so I wanted to list some of the provisions in the bill that I thought were kind of pertinent to young people. Uh, so the first one I think was really important for young people is same-day voter registration, which I think would definitely help bring out uh, young people to vote. They could just go and vote you know, the same day, and I would love to see more young people vote, and everybody talks about that, but nobody really has a solution to that. 
the second thing is expanded early voting. So as we know, college students are very busy people. Uh, so I think anything uh, to you know expand the days that people can go vote is a good thing. I mean, not only for college students, but also just for working people in general. It just makes sense. Um, and of course, expanded voting by mail, mail like they said before. I think you know, the easier we can make it to vote, uh, the better it will be. And then, of course, we said the ban on partisan gerrymandering, which obviously we've seen the legislature take place. And I want to make sure that you know our districts in West Virginia are you know fair uh, and equal. Um, and then also the campaign finance reform provisions. Uh, I think young people are very worried about. Uh, campaign finance because it's hard for us to, you know, run campaigns and we feel like our voice doesn't matter when we donate, you know, to a candidate, but then the other opponent has, you know, corporate money behind them. Uh, so all these things and more are included in the bill and they would all help keep West Virginia elections safe, uh, but also strengthen elections all around the country, which is a good thing. And uh, college students understand the need to make our democracy better, uh, our elections more free and fair, and we're starting to get involved in the political process. Um, and we look forward to just engaging in the political process and making it better for everyone. And on behalf of the College Democrats of West Virginia, I want to thank Senator Manchin for all his work he's done so far on voting rights. Thank you so much, Ariana. So this is a caravan that we're going across the state. We started in Charleston this morning at 9 a.m. We stopped in Fairmont. We're here in Morgantown now, and we're headed to Charlestown which John has already come, Delegate Doyle has already come that way, this way. So we said it was a 300 mile uh, jaunt, but really, you know, that's only one way and just from Charleston to, to Charlestown. We're actually covering like probably more than a thousand because we got John coming this way. But we also have a special guest from Tucker County, Michael McClintock, who has joined this caravan, come out here to Morgantown. We'd like to offer up the opportunity to say some words. Democratic chair in Tucker County. I'm not from here. My wife and I came, I, I actually came here via New York City. You gotta City. hold the mic closer. I came up here, I came here from Philadelphia via New York City 25 years ago to make my life here. And so Tucker County is very rural. I, I've had the fortune this year to have some small part in being asked questions by, by uh, legislators about uh, H.R. 1 and now the Freedom to Vote Act. And I will, so Senator Manchin, uh, much to some people's surprise, I suppose, was instrumental in craft, in putting together a coalition, uh, including Senators Warnock and Klobuchar, to craft this bill. And we have this bill that is the Freedom to Vote Act. We all, mo almost everybody here, I'm sure everybody here has the right to vote. It's the freedom to vote that's important, unimpeded, unhindered. and. And this bill that they put together, there is absolutely nothing partisan about it. If you read this bill, it is about voting. There's nothing added on to it that can remotely be construed as partisan by any unbiased reading of it. It is only partisan in legislative halls. So, you know, I think we probably all realize what Mitch McConnell and his caucus are going to do today. But, uh, the reality is that uh, when, when we vote, if anybody is denied their opportunity to vote or there's friction or to, to their, their opportunity to vote, we are actually all injured at some level. And that's always been true. People like Susan B. Anthony and her group understood this. Uh, uh, Reverend, Reverend Martin Luther King, Dolores Huerta, uh, the King family continues this. Less famous people like like uh, Barbara Arnwine and, and Natalie Tennant work towards this, and then all of us are also working towards this, because at a granular level, this is what's important. It, it, it's kind of like uh, when a tree falls in the woods uh, and there's no one there to hear, does it make a noise? The, the reality is, yes, it makes a noise every single damn time it happens. And there's nothing special or unusual about this bill. It's all completely sensible legislation, and there's no reason that it shouldn't be passed in D.C. soon. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. All right, we got, I think, two more people. You're going to want to hear these, folks. 
So up next we've got Natalie Tennant, former Secretary of State, and, and, the Mountaineer. Let's go, voters! That's right. Actually, I was just talking about this on my live Facebook. Up, to, up and down Spruce Street, I lived in the sorority house, Alpha Z Delta. I worked at Morgantown Floors down here. Man, did I make a, 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 pave, or a, a groove in the pavement here. Big cast. Yeah, that's right. To be able to stand strong. Thank you, Ryan and Working Families Party. Amazing job of getting us all together and moving, moving, moving like we need to do. Now, I'm going to tell you this because here is the warning that I have been receiving from my colleagues who are national election specialists, national election administrators. Here's the warning. The warning is that 2020 was only practice. Now, you say, well, what does that mean, Natalie? You, you know, the, the cybersecurity expert Chris Krebs says it was the most secure election that we've ever had. Well, why wouldn't we want to repeat it? Well, sure, we do want to repeat the security aspect. And as Delegate Evans talked about, the, the voter turnout, we want to repeat that. But here's what the warning is, that it's only practice with the election subversion the sabotage that is taking place now. We're seeing it in legislatures across the country where they're taking away the authority of a secretary of state or changing the people on the state election board. And why was that? Because they didn't like the outcome, they lost. Is that what we want to have? Well, no, we don't want to have that, but that's what this bill will do. It will address that. And Senator Manchin, in his compromise, when he came back, when he devastated us by saying, no, I'm not going to vote for, for the People Act, we were like, okay, well, what do you want? Well, he worked with senators. He worked with Senate leadership and came back with Freedom to Vote Act. And what we have now is that protection from election subversion, the, the protection from the sabotage. That is in this legislation. Also, what's in this legislation that is so important is the fact that poll workers, now many of you are poll workers before, many of you have friends and family members, the extra protection that's needed, because remember that thing that we had? The election sabotage, they went after poll workers with threats and intimidation. And now that is addressed because of Freedom to Vote Act. And that is what is in here now. So that's why it's so important. A lot of talk about what, what other elements are in there. And Ariana, thank you for talking about same day voter registration. I sat here, and, and here's another area. I sat in Monongalia County after election day and oh, by the way, I lost. Did I go to the state capitol and try to, to, to you know, knock on the doors and say, let me win? No. Did I go to uh, Harrison County and knock on the doors and say, no, I won? No, but that's what's happening. I mean, our own Secretary of State, you don't think it's happening. He led a Stop the Steal rally. You want to talk about sabotage. So all the great things we're saying about West Virginia is torn apart after all of that. So one aspect, though, that I learned here in Montegalia County was, because I have people tell me to my face and on social media, social media is a good thing and it's a bad thing, but we certainly learn about folks when they're like, freedom to vote? Who doesn't have a freedom to vote? Hang on. Tucker's got to do his job. I don't, th do you guys love this line? I can vote easily. I don't know anybody else who can't vote. Mm -hmm. Privilege. Privilege. I mean, can, can you say that Privilege. any loud? I mean, Privilege. well, bully for you. Bully for you. We are in a rural state. We are in a poor rural state where people can't get three miles down the road to get to a polling place. That's why we need mail-in voting wherever the delegate went. That's why we need it. And here in Montegalia County, there were more, nearly 200 people who didn't have their votes counted. Oh, wow. So guess what? You do know somebody. Do you care enough about them or do you only care about yourself or what we get? That's why freedom to vote is so important. That's why what Senator Manchin has done and made this his signature bill. 
because their votes weren't counted. I mean, I could go on and on, and their votes weren't counted because they may have voted in the wrong precinct. Well, guess what? They may have been told to vote in the wrong precinct. That's why we need same-day registration. There's also a provision in this bill, the Freedom to Vote Act, that says count the ballot. Count the ballot if you're eligible to be in that, in that area that would count, even if you're in the wrong precinct. So that's why this all is so important, that we continue the fight. We continue to stand up. And for Senator Capito to say she's not voting for it, did she even read it? Does no. she not want to protect poll workers? Does she not want to protect election officials? Does she not want to protect voters? It's about voters. So we are urging Senator Capito to bring that bipartisan support that Senator Manchin wants. They work well together. They can work well together on this for guess who? West Virginians. So thank you for your work. Thank you for standing strong. And let's move forward and get this done. Thank you so much. Woo. All right. Up next, we've got Delegate Danielle Walker. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Come on, we need to make sure that they hear us in D.C. They hear us in Charleston. I said good afternoon. Good afternoon. I am. I am is a declaration. What comes after is a privilege of we the people. So I am delegate. It's not my title. It's your title. It's the freedom title. Danielle Walker. So I am delegate Danielle Walker. That's going to teach you something about pain to progress to power. See, that's what we're here for today. We are still undergoing the pain of voter suppression, whether you like it or not. We are still going through the pain of not counting someone's vote, whether you like it or not. See, we are still going through the pain because we know that our vote is our voice. And when you suppress it, you become an oppressor. See, the pain of not being able to freely cast my vote is an America. It's not patriotic. Who are you to take the democracy of my birthright? See, my birthright is not about freedom. My birthright is guaranteed to me when I am born on the soil of the land of the free and the home of the brave. Yes, ma'am! Yes, ma'am! So we must talk about that pain. Because this is progress. This is progress. See, we sacrifice every day. Whether we have a home to call our own, whether we have a grocery store where we can get fresh fruits and vegetables, whether we have a living wage, whether we are awaiting trial, but there is no bail reform. See, everyone should have the ability to vote and no bars should be a barrier. See, if we're going to talk about it, we're going to be uncomfortable. And we've been uncomfortable for the centuries. We've been uncomfortable for the decades. Yeah, we passed an amendment where black men could vote. But the pain was that they were lynched either before or after they cast that vote. Be real, be real. So the blood, sweat, and tears. The blood, sweat, and tears of the red, white, and blue that you see yesterday, today, and for all the tomorrows, it is our freedom. Mm -hmm. 
and then certain women were allowed to vote. Yeah. See, that's where that pain come in. I don't need you just to know part of history. I don't need you to have the glittering generalities of the propaganda and the bandwagon. See, we're going to stand up and we're going to speak out and we're going to march and we're going to drive and we're going to call in everybody. This is a nonpartisan bill. So why is it stuck and where is it stuck at? See, don't tell me anything about being nonpartisan. And you ain't walking the walk and you ain't talking the talk. It's one thing to introduce it, but this says it's an act. So I need a vote on it. You don't get to hinder my freedom. You don't get to put no gag in my mouth. You don't get to call me out my name. But what you gonna do is remember. You gonna remember every voice that was heard today. You gonna remember every sign that was seen today. You gonna remember the blood, sweat, and tears that was given for the yesterdays. You heard the young West Virginians. You heard them. This is their home. This is our home. This is our mountain state. There is no barriers. Y'all means all. And it doesn't stop with the boundaries and the barriers of West Virginia. We need this in Georgia. We need this in Louisiana. We need this in Texas. So what are we going to do? Are we going to stand back and stand by? I don't know about y'all, but I don't do much of that where I come from. <laughs> but I know I'm going to stand up and I'm going to speak up. And I know our vote is our voice. Can we say that? Our vote is our, our voice. voice. And our voice is our vote. Our, our voice is our, our vote. vote. I end with this. It's mighty simple. Freedom. Freedom. Freedom to vote. Act. You got the right, but our freedoms are being hindered. You got the right but the freedom of your voice is being gagged. We got the right, but the freedom to show up and show out every time, not just when it's convenient, not just when it's comfortable, all the time. I do not want to pick my district. It is disgusting. I want the voters to pick the district. I want the voters to pick their candidates. I don't want to have to sit through canvassing and see 200 votes thrown out just in my county. Do better, America. Senator Manchin, thank you for introducing the bill. Senator Manchin, we need a vote on the bill. I am Delegate Danielle Walker. <laughs> One more person to close this thing out. <laughs> but before that, I want to make sure that everyone pull out your cell phone, and I'm going to give you an opportunity to contact Senator Manchin and say thank you for voting, for putting this up, and let's get this bill passed. We need the Freedom to Act, the Freedom to Vote Act, right now. So start a new text message to phone number 30403. You can do this too if you're watching online. And send the message, free vote. 30403 and the message free vote and it's going to give you an opportunity to express your support for the Freedom to Vote Act. So we want to wrap this up with our partner from West Virginia Citizen Action Group, Gary Zuckett, to give us a little bit more information about what we're doing and where we're going. Thank you, Ryan. 
Uh, West Virginia Students Act is great. Is proud to be a partner of this project. And uh, from here we go to Charlestown. We started out at 9 o'clock in the morning in front of the state capitol. We were at 11 o'clock. We were outside of the uh, Fairmont office of Senator Manchin, the Senator Message Center Manchin. It's great to be in Morgantown. I'm a, I'm a graduate of WVU Tech. And it's great to be here with all these folks. And one thing I'd like to say, when I say freedom, you say to vote. Freedom. To vote. Freedom. To vote. Freedom. To vote. Okay, let's do it. Thank you.